We have actually the scary story, don't we? No, no, we're, no, we're not. We, we don't. We don't need to do this one. We'll just jump over. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. This story is freaky, dude. The Pacific Ocean is so acidic that it's dissolving uh, Dungeness crab shells. You, okay, so that, hold on. That is scary. That's but, man. That's so. Wait, wait. Let's let's, let's 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 slow down with this one. The ocean is so acidic; it's dissolving crabs' shells. Their shells are what, like hard keratin, yeah. like your fingernails, yeah, melting in the ocean. That's crazy. You know why this is really crazy, though? Why? I saw this story, and I'm kind of like, oh, whatever, man. Like, I don't know. What does this mean? What does it mean? Does it mean it's easier to eat crab? Nah, check this out. Jump over. The, jump over to the next story, for context. This story is from 2014. Why are millions of starfish melting? So it says it's a virus, okay? Yeah, it's, I was just reading it. It says yeah. it's a virus there. A virus is the culprit behind a gruesome wasting disease that has struck sea stars along the west coast of Canada and the U.S. So I, I don't want to show this and act like they're the same thing. Right. But you literally have another story only a few years later of the ocean just becoming so screwed up. Crabs are dissolving. But that's, I, I, That's crazy. That's gross. It is a little gross. I suppose we should read the crab story, though, and see what's going on. Let's see it's from CNN. Let's see. Pacific Ocean is becoming more acidic, and the cash crabs that live in its coastal waters are some of its first inhabitants to feel its effects. The Dungeness crab is a vital commercial fisheries in Pacific North Northwest, but the lower pH levels in its habitat are dissolving parts of its shell and damaging its sensory organs. Man, that a is new so study. Sad. That's creepy, though. That's sad, man. They're gonna, you, know, you, know, you know what they're going to say, right? Do you, mm. know, do you know what the article is going to say? What? It's going to get to the point where it goes, How dare you? You have stolen my childhood. Oh, man. The crab is saying you have stolen my childhood. Or it's uh, life. Yeah, do you want to, let's, let's, what, what, the, their injuries, you want to pick it up? Yeah, sure. Their injuries could impact coastal e economics and forebode the obstacles in changing sea. And while the results aren't unexpected, the study author, the study's authors said the damage to the crabs is premature. The acidity wasn't predicted to damage the crabs this quickly. That's so the way we that's knew this was going to happen. Yeah. What? what See, what's what's acidifying the oceans, though? Uh, Whoa, what was that? No clue. <clears throat> I think the cat just like cause damage in the house otherwise someone broke in and they're going to come kill us if the crabs are affected already we really need to make sure we pay more much more attention to the various components of the food chain before it's too late said study leader nina uh bed, bed bed Narsic. Narsic, the senior scientist with the southern california coastal water research project i had to read that last name because i can normally never pronounce names you did it you I know that's it. why I jumped yeah, in. I'm it. like, ooh, I can read this one. This is one I'm not going to get wrong. Got this. <laughs> I get them wrong all the time. I would have got there. Let's see. I how, can't say how names. How the ocean acidifies. Let's see. The ocean is acidifying because it's absorbing more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, which leaves, uh, which lowers the pH levels in the water. Okay. So there's just more CO2 in the air and it's absorbing it. Really? Hmm. That's weird. What, what were you expecting? I don't know. I don't know. Dumping mercury and flushing our toilets. Ocean acidification. No. Wait, hold on. You're shaking. It. Yeah, that's all it is. It's just what? an increase in the CO2. So you're saying humans didn't do it or they did do it? We did. Oh, yeah. we're, we're killing everybody. It's a problem than we realized. Like, I don't think we realize how much it's affecting the oceans. So yeah. the world's going to end? Probably. So should I, should I stock Six up on months? cans of Chef Boyardee? Yeah. <laughs> Chef Boyardee? Yeah. yeah. That'll, that'll no, help No, no, I mean, I'm serious. Like, I can't remember what happened, but we, I went to the store and I bought, like, a bunch of Chef Boyardee. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I was like, this is canned food. Apparently, it's all expired already because it, like, doesn't last long at all. Gross. Like, that was, like, the worst prepping I've ever done. I was like, canned food, right? Canned food. Chef Boyardee. <laughs> but it was, it was I don't Quality know. I was just, food. I just saw it, and I was like, you know, when I was little, I loved this stuff. Have you tried? Did you try it? It was gross. I'm sure it's gross. <laughs> it's terrible. It's Why did I like this when I was little? Oh, man. Um, anyway. Okay, let's get back. Let's get serious for a second. Let me uh, let me pick it up. Okay, so ocean acidification changes the coasts, releasing excess nutrient that can create algal blooms. Ooh, that's scary, dude. I got some algal bloom stories for you guys. Increasing sea temperatures and salinity, according to NOAA. But for crustaceans and coral that rely on carbonate ions, I don't know what that is, which are less abundant in more acidic waters to build their shells and their coral skeletons, it becomes more difficult to build strong shells. It's not just crabs either. Oysters, clams, and plankton all rely on the same carbonate ions to strengthen themselves, and humans and sea creatures alike rely on them. 
some for food, others for economic security. All right. You know what? I really don't care about the life of a crab, but I'm going to tell you a story because you brought up something before the show that was really interesting about uh, desalinization. Hmm, Right. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I guess they're um, starting to just pull water from the ocean, take the salt out to make drinking water, but then they're dumping it right back into the water. Yeah, they really they put the brine back, just the brine back into the water. It's just like so when we were when, when we were getting set up, you were like, I think what if that's it? Right. What if it's the brine? Well, I mean, I'm I'm thinking that definitely could contribute to the ocean getting messed up. And you were correct. So basically, here's what happened. So then I was like, you know, so Adam brought that up. and I'm like, it's a good point. I actually did uh, um, a mini series, like a mini mini series, like a YouTube series. We did like three or four videos okay. where we went to desalinization plants. And yeah, so here's, here's this is crazy. Oh, you went to the plants. We went to the plants. It's crazy. It's like a whole bunch of PVC pipes where the water just gets forced through a ridiculous amount of filters mm-hmm. and purified water comes out and all the salt flushed right back into the ocean. Now this is messed up. Yeah. So this is in California. Go figure. They, they have no idea what they're doing. And so what happened is, yes, during the drought, they were panicking and saying, what can we do? They started, they, I, I think they reactivated an old desalination, uh, desalinization plant, thinking we'll make fresh water for all of our residents with ocean water. When you put the brine back in, it's denser, and it goes to the bottom and, and slides down the ocean floor, purging the, 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 the lowest form of uh, the lowest life on the, lives on the food chain. Anything that lives along the So bottom. basically, what we were being told by environmental organizations was that you have fish. Mm-hmm. The fish eats, you know, the bugs. The bugs eat the, the little mites and bacteria and planktons on the ocean floor. Right. The brine kills all that. The bugs die. The fish die. And then you create a big dead pocket of, of salty water. Yep. I don't understand how that's illegal, dumping the brine back in. Well, I mean, here's the, what are they supposed to do with it? You know, the other problem not is, dude, to listen, water from the ocean. But here's here's the other the other problem is like there's going to come a point, And this is scary where there are so many humans that water like you will. You, there'll be water wars. It's already kind of happening in India yeah. right now. Totally. Yep. It's pretty intense. So they think desalinization is going to be the, the key, right? Then we're literally going to slowly drain ocean water. And I know there's a lot. Yeah. But then we're going to be replacing it with brine. And even if we pull the brine out and dump it somewhere else, mm-hmm. yeah, there's only like there's only there's a finite amount of people that can exist full of we're bags of water, man. Yep. So the ocean levels will go down. And once the ocean collapse, ha- you know, happens like we're gone. Yeah. Once the ocean dies, we're, we're dead. Humans are in trouble, man. Yeah, they really are. And so that's what, you know, really bo- that's what bothers me about these environmental lists, because, is this, you know, you know, what story I really love and I love uh, I'm saying love sarcastically. So, you know, the Green New Deal, the environmentalists, they want high speed rail trains, mm-hmm. right? To, so that uh, planes consume too much energy and carbon emissions. But high speed rail can be done much more efficiently, right? Well, I don't know. Well, it's more efficient than flying. Right. OK. So in the UK, they say, OK, we're going to do it. Guess what happened? Environmentalists blocked the construction saying, no, you can't tear down the trees. So what do we do? Do we just like not have kids then live in caves? Uh, don't eat. Turn the lights off. We got uh, these big bright lights for the studio set. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's a pickle. We're really in a, you know, you know, you know what the scary thing to me, though, is about time. like the environmentalist stuff is basically people like, um, you know, when Greta Thunberg says, we don't want to wait till 2050, 2030, or even 2021. Mm-hmm. We want fossil fuels ended today. That just means the mass like execution of poor people. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if she necessarily means like turn the the power off for fossil fuels. She said it straight up. Just she said no, we won't. No. We won't wait till tw- we don't want to wait till 2050 mm-hmm. or 2030 or even 2021. We want fossil fuels ended today. The government's res- the government's responded like we can do it by 2050. And she said, no. The reason they said that 2050 is because you've got people who rely on heat energy from fossil fuels to live. Right. Food production, machinery. Everything. Everything right now relies yep. on it. Everything. And, but here's here. So here's the tricky part. What if? Well, no, I, I don't think humanity will ever cease to exist, but there's going to be a lot of suffering once we get to like, you know, mass ecological destruction. It's going to happen. But then, so what's the solution? A preemptive cull, like Greta Thunberg would imply? I don't want to... I don't she imply w- that? No, no, no. I don't want to be as, as, as hyperbolic as to claim she's going around saying, kill the poor. But she, what, it's like, imagine if someone said... Uh, uh, here, here's how I see it. 
imagine there's like a bunch of bunnies sitting below a cliffside and someone on the top is screaming, push the boulder off the edge. They're not directly saying kill the bunnies. You know what I mean? Okay. You push that boulder off the edge, those bunnies are going to die. So Greta Thunberg is saying, you know, this boulder is bad for our village and our home and it's going to cause problems for this planet. We need to push it off the cliff. And there's people sitting down there. So is she saying kill the people? No. But what she's asking for will kill people and a lot of them. Hmm. But that's whether she realizes it or not, kind of the point. Like, if we're going to prevent mass ecological disaster, which could result in massive loss of life, Mm -hmm. so they see it, their proposal is essentially have the loss of life happen now. It reminds me of like, uh, you ever see the movie Kingsman? Yeah. With Samuel Jackson. He's like the, I think I saw the gentleman spies. Maybe I think I saw it. Basically, the, the bad guy thinks climate change is going to kill humans because the earth is getting a fever to kill us. Uh, so his plan, kill half of them first. Oh. Yeah. And then he tries. And the noble gentleman spies stop him. But that's okay. interesting. But premise. this is what, the, but no, but like, yeah, so Sam Jackson plays the villain mm-hmm. and he's like, he's got a list, but he's like, earth is getting a fever. So we got to, you know, call the masses. Otherwise, we will cease to exist. <laughs> the, the character has a lisp. Yeah. But um, I find it fascinating because the only real difference between what he's saying and what like Greta says is the intent. You know, yeah. he's the villain because he knows he has to do it. Right. Greta's not a villain because she doesn't know what the result will be of her calls to end fossil fuel production. Like, dude, farming machinery, the production of food, it is all dependent upon transporting food back and forth. There's some places like, look at man. If we cut off fossil fuels today, everyone, in, all the researchers in Antarctica are dead. True. Just, sorry, we got no oil to drive the ship to bring the food or get you out. Get on your rowboat and try and make it out of Antarctica. Oh, man. Oh, so, rowboat. But, but, but the crazy thing is that, you know, people will try to argue, well, she's not talking about, no, she, she literally said it. And then she said a bunch of weird stuff about like ending colonialism. I have no idea. It doesn't seem to make sense. But I, but I, I, will, I will say this though, like, what, what, what do we do? If the oceans are acidifying, Crabs are melting. Starfish are melting from a virus. The 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 uh, the fisheries are collapsing. You know, carbon dioxide is acidifying the water. Do we just sit back and say, well, you know, just let it happen? What can we do about it? No, I don't want to believe that. I can't. I can't believe that. I have to believe that humans will eventually realize that they're going to die off and. In our selfishness, we'll figure out a way because we are that selfish. Well, I think as long as we have, you know, I know I'm dragging Greta a lot, but as long as like as Americans, we do not respond to what she's delivering, man. She really is like, look, I I worked for Greenpeace, too. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so so early earlier on, Adam mentioned that uh, your wife worked for Greenpeace and that in Sweden, yelling at people works Mm -hmm. in America doesn't. We, you know, so I was one of the nation's best for Greenpeace and we would go around and we'd smile in a handshake and you want to be fun and personable and, and charismatic. Yeah. You're like, yo, what's up, dude? Come on. Now you're coming over here. Come on. Come here, buddy. And then I'd like walk over. I check your hand. Like, yeah, you're saving the environment. Not too late. I got you. And they'd laugh. And I'd mm-hmm. be like, no escape. No escape. Not do it. Give me a credit card. And they would be laughing about it. Yeah. You'd be fun and silly. Right. But if you yelled at them and some people would try it, people would get mad at you. They'd be like, don't you tell me. So yeah, I think we've got we've got environmental problems, you know, and I think it's made worse by the fact that you have people in media, you have these environmental activists who lie, like the whole Amazon fires thing that happened in the news cycle a couple yeah. like a year or so ago. It's, it's a nat- naturally occurring thing. Right? No, 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 no. The farmers were were uh, clearing fields for animal production, probably. So there there are problems with it. Mm-hmm. So what happens is when when the, after they grow certain crops, they burn it off. And mm-hmm. it's like, it's a normal process. Okay. But then you see the New York Times and all these places takes, you know, satellite heat photos or whatever. And they're like, oh no, the Amazon's burning. And it's like, you're taking, you know, you know, it really bothers me how the media does this. They'll take these things out of context and act like all these fires are a serious catastrophe when like they're, they're burning on purpose. Yeah. Like they're farming. I get it. Cutting down the Amazon for farms is really, really bad. Yeah. But don't lie about it. Right. Right. I don't know, man. These people think the ends justify the means and that lying is the only way to get the job done. Or to get the clicks, I, okay, you know what? Those what's what 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 really bugs me is it reminds me of Watchmen. Have you read or seen Watchmen? I saw the movie. Yeah. At the end, when you know humanity has agreed to work together after Ozymandias's scheme, mm-hmm. and then Rorschach is like, "I refuse. Never compromise. Not even in the face of Armageddon." It's an interesting 
conundrum. Do you accept the evil of Ozymandias because it saves humanity? Or do you agree with Rorschach that you can't allow, you know, people to, to you can't allow this deceit over the people and that the truth must be known? And so Dr. Manhattan kills Rorschach. Explodes. 